Our verse today is Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting by the tax booth. He said to him, follow me, and he rose and followed him. Jesus had just healed the lame man in Capernaum and was moving towards the Sea of Galilee. As he passed by the tax office, he saw Matthew sitting at the tax booth. Let us unpack a few details. First, the tax office was probably on the outskirts of Capernaum. Capernaum was on the busy Damascus Road, where the provinces of Philip and his brother Herod Antipas shared a border. Hence, there was a need to have a tax booth between the two territories. This is something like a toll gate. It might have been a ferry tax booth where persons and goods were transported across the lake. Many ships landed and transited the lake or coasted from town to town. At the time of the Romans, tax collectors obtained their posts from Roman authorities through a bidding system. They made huge profits by levying higher taxes, keeping the excess amount for themselves. Hence, they were considered traitors and public sinners. They had a very low reputation in the society. Matthew was one of these tax collectors, sitting at the tax booth and doing his work when Jesus saw him. Matthew's name is quite essential. His name in Aramaic goes back to Mataniah, which means gift of God. You can read 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 17, and Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4. He was indeed a gift of God. And Jesus would help him realize the meaning of his name by becoming truly a gift to the world through his gospel. In the gospel of Mark and Luke, he is called Levi. You can read Mark chapter 2, verse 14, and Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Some scholars argue that this could mean that Matthew was different from Levi. This argument may not be founded because we know that in the Jewish setting, many Jews had more than one name. Moreover, the name Levi could identify him as coming from the tribe of Levi. Interestingly, all Gospels name Matthew as one of the apostles. Matthew, whom we believe is the author of this Gospel, talks about his conversion and call by Jesus in this passage. That helps us to understand the second part of the verse. Jesus said to him, follow me, and he arose and followed. Follow me is an imperative, a call to action, and must be seen as that invitation to become a disciple. Matthew understood the meaning of that invitation, and he immediately got up and followed Jesus. A few lessons from this verse. First, Jesus did not despise any profession, even when the people considered it a dirty job. Jesus can transform us and use us to change the dirty jobs we do to survive. Many people engage in shady deals and businesses to survive. Jesus does not condemn us, but wants to transform us into something better. By following Jesus, Matthew attracted other task collectors to follow Jesus. You could imagine the transformation in their lives. Second, Jesus does not despise anyone, no matter how the world considers them. Matthew was considered a public sinner. Jesus looked beyond that to the salvation of his soul. That is what Jesus looks at in each of us. He wants us to be saved. He does not look at how dirty we are. He knows that he can transform us into something beautiful if we come to him. And finally, Matthew arose and followed as soon as Jesus called him from his state of life. God beckons on us today. He may be calling us to leave that dirty state, rise from that position and follow him. Are you ready to respond like Matthew? Lord, open our ears to heed your call and follow you sincerely. Amen. God bless you and I wish you a pleasant day.